It was started back in 2013. Really wasn't looking at like going into e-commerce uh, per se. We were kind of just a group of friends standing out in my backyard, arguing who had the best beard. That turned into a charity event. That turned into a business that turned into something that pays the bills and something that we love to do every day. That's kind of the short of it. Um, Welcome to the channel, Jason. It's great to have you here. Another entrepreneur who is inspired, who is inspiring others as well. And so you just had a conversation really hands-on with the business, which is definitely the best way to keep the grip on the business as you grow. Why don't you introduce yourself? What are you currently working on? What are the businesses? And uh, we'll take it from there. So my name is Jason Sealand. I own and operate uh, with my business partner, uh, two e-com businesses. They're Brutality Coffee and Mad Viking Beard Company. Our main business is Mad Viking. <clears throat> it was started back in 2013. Really wasn't looking at like going into e-commerce uh, per se. We were kind of just a group of friends standing out in my backyard, arguing who had the best beard. That turned into a charity event. That turned into a business that turned into something that pays the bills and something that we love to do every day. That's kind of the short of it. Um, the story is on our website under like the footer. It's called The Legend. It's kind of an inside joke between a few of us or whatever. But that's kind of the story and how everything started, you know, for our e-com journey. Gotcha. That, that's, I already have a bunch of questions <laughs> that I would love to, love to hear. So first of uh, all, the, the backyard story. I believe I saw somewhere on LinkedIn that you are, you live in the city called Pulaski Township. Is that, a, does, is that all right? We, we moved, uh, our, uh, we built a new warehouse here in late 2019 so before we were up around where i live probably about a half an hour away we had to move the business because we outgrew where we were at basically but we we are in like a it's just small town suburbs of a, a larger smaller town <laughs> it's 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 just small town pennsylvania basically gotcha i'm asking because i'm i'm polish and okay called Pulaski that uh, I know there is a bridge, I believe, in New York that is named after him as well. He was um, popular for fighting for independence first in, in Poland and then mm -hmm. in the United States. And I actually uh, read a bunch of stories about him. And I know that he connected with uh, Benjamin Franklin in Europe when he was overseas. And that's how he got into the United States. And uh, so I was, uh, that, that caught my attention right away. But now sure. back, back to the backyard story. So how did it, like, what was the charity event all about? Like you started coming up with like product ideas or you tested a bunch of product ideas, formulas and stuff like that? Oh, no, it, it was like that. It was uh, five or six of us. And, you know, we were just arguing who could grow the best beard. It was kind of getting into the early, early fall situation. And, uh, you know, we just all decided to shave the next day, meet up six months later at a local VFW. And, you know, whoever the winner is, everybody buys them drinks, you know, for the rest of the year, right? It was, okay. it was that simple of an idea. But we took it to Facebook. We took it to social media at the time. Back in, this was probably, yeah, late 2012. And, uh, you know, we just garnered a lot of attention from it. Everybody wanted to go to it to the point where people were asking if they get tickets. And we were like, it's just a group of us, you know. So that, that little I turned into about 150 person, uh, beard competition. And we raised a couple thousand dollars for, uh, children's hospital, which is, a uh, I, I spent, there's a kid with scoliosis and my business partner spent time there as a kid with his, with this condition he had when he was smaller. So it was kind of a, a charity that, you know, touched our lives a little bit. And that's why we decided to do it that way. Right. So that first event, we didn't, we business didn't even, you know, think about going into business until right before the event, I would say, uh, a lot of people were asking us, you know, do you guys make products for beards too? You know, it, it, so we looked into it and we we're like, man, that sounds like a lot of fun. And I love, you know, artwork and branding and, you know, doing programming on the computer, like all this stuff. That's, that's kind of my world and where I came from. But at the time I was a truck driver. And a mm. DJ. So like, like go, go, yeah, go into e-commerce. I'm like, I, I have no idea. You know, my hobbies were like 
you know, computer related stuff and artwork and graphics and stuff like that. So, you know, it was kind of a big leap and, uh, that that's how it snowballed and started though. Yeah. A truck driver, a DJ, an artist <laughs> now into e-commerce entering. First of all, I wanted to say that I appreciate and I love the, admire the fact that you guys are giving back. I think that this is, we all should start, you know, businesses and being creative and being curious and try to grow outgrow our like comfort zone and, and give back. I think this th th those are causes, but the name, are you, are you Scandinavia or your co-founder or your partners are from Scandinavia? Where, where how did you come up with the name Viking? Okay. Man. So, so that's on the website in a little bit of detail. The name comes from my great grandfather who played baseball in the late twenties, early thirties. I uh, got scouted by Honus Wagner for the Yankees and the Pirates. He's a pitcher, but um, they used to call him the angry Swede and the mad Viking. So when I was growing up playing baseball, I always wanted to, you know, play in the majors, like a lot of, I didn't get nearly as close as him, uh, but he had the opportunity. He, I even realized as a kid, he would show me like some of the paperwork attached to, you know, these offers. And uh, he would, you know, we, we play catch every once in a while, not a lot, but like, I remember those stories and I remember, you know, seeing that and I was just, as a kid, so awestruck about that. So I kind of carried that, you know, the name and stuff with me. Uh, that whole side of my family was, you know, immigrated from Sweden and Finland. So that's, you know, that's where that name came from. Gotcha. 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 The first <laughs> year, since you were not you like per se, like the background in marketing, um, you know, social media, running ads on social media. Maybe you got some, you got into Google. What, what was the first year for you guys? Zero to no expectations whatsoever. We were just happy to get one sale. Um, I remember the first day it happened. Um, I probably spent, leading up to that, I probably spent a couple days on uh, Big Cartel is what was our first web shop that, that we you know, kind of built the website on because it was the easiest. You know, uh, having a little bit limited knowledge. I mean, I had knowledge, but not of what an e-commerce site should be and optimized and all that good stuff. Like it's, it's came a long way since then, but, um, yeah, we start, started on big cartel and uh, it was only a t-shirt. We started out with a t-shirt and a couple beard oils. And I remember when I put that t-shirt up, we got like 50 orders in like a day and, and I, was like what this is insane and it was all the people from the event and that followed us and knew about us from doing what we you know done in the past and i was just like man if we can keep this up this is this is gonna be fun this is gonna be great right i get to create artwork put on t-shirts i get to create formulas and put them in cosmetic products for guys and i was just like just fireworks you know ideas were were going everywhere right and um so that was the first that was the first year is kind of just testing experimenting seeing what worked and just you know progressing from there i guess so the, i it looks like the for the for most like word of mouth and people showing love to you know from from the events right the initial yeah. event and you did you start right away with like social media like instagram facebook as well or like even organic what was kind of like the creative process there it was right around the time where the, the Facebook algorithms are great, right? You could post something and just got a lot of attention. You could post something now and it's totally the opposite. Like we started with a group on Facebook and there's, there's probably like 20 to 30 of us tops. And we all just started inviting our friends and it just grew from there. I think the group right now has you know, 18, 19,000 people in it. And then after that kind of came a page, I think there's a hundred thousand followers or something on the page right now. But I, I think a lot of our early success, you know, obviously came from grassroots, but I, I would say Facebook in the early days helped, uh, you know, connect everybody and bring that together. I don't think that would have happened with, without a social, social media channel like that, for sure. Now, social media, actually, I, I, I saw, Facebook reels popping again, like last year, they made some changes to kind of like even out the the competition, basically how, how much time people spend on Facebook versus Instagram and other social media channels. 
obviously like TikTok. So they they the reels are are start start popping. I don't know if you guys um try to get back on Facebook with like reels, just straight up reels, but this you can reach a lot of people organically with that now too. Yeah, I think I thought of social media channels uh kind of hopped on that bandwagon when they seen the success behind what TikTok was doing and the shorter attention spans and you know YouTube went that way, Snapchat, you know, Facebook, Instagram Reels, every kind of every kind of went that direction. I feel like in a in a so or maybe a little bit more, you'll start getting that long form stuff back as well too, because it's okay to be entertained and you know have less than three second thumb stops on ads and stuff like that, you know. But I think there's still something to be said for like long form content. Yeah, I, I agree. I do. It's sometimes when I look at the user generated content that is actually not even user generated it's just a creator that pumps daily like hundreds of videos for various products it sometimes makes me like cringe like it's it's so <laughs> natural like you, i don't know how people can buy from it i guess just because they see the product and they you know want to try it but some of some of that i see or content is so not genuine and i feel like people start start notice it as well like as a consumer myself you know like I, I want to see the benefits of it, but it, if I see a, a person that is not, this is totally fake, and you can tell that, you know, they're like, they get for it. It's it's, right. it's, it's crazy. But knowing what you know now, a, a lot of years into this, would you do something differently the first year when you were starting or together with your partners? No, because, well, I get I got kind of a dual answer in my head. No, because... You know, we, I'm really persistent as is my partner and what we didn't know, we just went and looked out and, you know, found the answers and, and did maximum amount we could, you know, um, I don't, we could have done anything too much different based on the knowledge that we had, you know? So yeah, I, I don't think I would change anything except wishing like I knew more about e-commerce when I started, I guess I could be it, you know? Speaking of which, do you have any, I mean, role models, not the right word, but any like advisors, mentors, or groups that you're part of, like communities um, that are kind of like answering questions that might come up as, as you as you grow at every stage of the, of the. There, there was somebody when we had our first website built for us that I used to talk to um, back and forth, but it, you know, that, that lasted and we, you know, so I guess, I guess, yeah, there, there's one person starting out, but after that, it's just kind of been look for the answers, find them, you know, execute on them. We didn't really have, I, I didn't have a mentor or nothing like that you know, for the most part. So it's like learning through, through the, like learning through working basically. It's, yep. It's uh, a lot of crashing and burning and a lot of like picking yourself back up, dusting yourself off and doing it again. So let's, let's talk about biggest triumphs and biggest lessons over the last years like let's start with the triumph like what would be the biggest win so far that you would you would say uh for this year overall overall since the overall is just you know stoked and excited to know like we've never had a down month year over year we, we've been ever since we started year over year that's exciting for me because like i know we haven't reached the top of this niche or, you know, this niche is growing men's grooming, you know, as a whole, I think is growing and more guys are into the idea of actually presenting themselves better, having, you know, better facial hair and in a look and all that to so where, you know, 10 years ago that, that might not have been as widespread. Right. So I, I would say that's, that's my overall, um, what about well, well, second part of that question? <laughs> the second part was the lesson, the biggest lessons, or I don't like to call you know failure. Uh, I like to see it as a lesson. So what what would you say was your biggest lesson throughout the, the years of growing the business? Biggest lesson is profitability versus revenue. I think a lot of new, and I know we did, we were so focused on revenue and just, hey, we're making more. So we must be making more and that, and it actually worked that way to run a, a successful e-commerce business and scale. You need to do it profit profitably. Um, 
Yeah. And that's one thing that I feel like maybe we we learned a little bit too late, but you know, we're on the right track now and, and everything's going well. But um yeah, that 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 would definitely be it. Yeah, I think it's the biggest for for us all. I, that was the biggest lesson for us as well. It took me a, quite a well over two years to realize that I'm not shouldn't be revenue, should be chasing profits and profitability because that's what actually can you know <laughs> help you grow and and pay the bills. You can't pay the bills with just revenue if you have so too many expenses. So right. and you know if you have limited amount of time, you're not growing profitably. You're 24 hours, especially if you're hands on, just like you know you are. It might definitely. into some definitely big problems. That's the biggest lesson for for brands. Now, what is the process right now behind like your creatives? I know you are ver your person. Are when it comes to like taking photos of products, developing the products, posting that on like socials, create using the developing like creating the creatives for creating the creatives, like coming up with the creatives for <laughs> your ads. Uh, right. how what's the there do you handle everything in house do you have like a little studio take you know your iphone cameras or do you have like super professional setup do you source it out how do you go about that uh, when when i started with the business uh we were product photos with just iphones and you know it wasn't great they didn't look good mm. um i cringe when i look back at some of those images and our old you know our old website and stuff like that but I mean, you have to, to learn to grow, right? So I, I basically get into photography full steam. I also do like comfort, concert photography on the side. So like I've done all of our product photos, like mock-ups, artwork, all that stuff is, is me. As far as ad creatives, it's a mix between our agency and me. We recently just last year hired a in-house video editor that works with me and he's been really great but yeah that's that's kind of the core of you know our creative gotcha so video creators are a video creator editor sorry are you also um testing youtube ads and content there no that's that's something that we're deciding to push forward this year i guess that's something where i i've totally the ball as far as growth i know that we could jump in there and probably probably grow quite a bit if we utilize youtube correctly yeah, I, I feel like you can definitely tell a quick story in like a minute for each of the brand, uh, both both the, the coffee brand, the beer grooming company. I feel like you could YouTube ad be solid for for you. Um, yeah. Definitely, a Q four could be a good time for to to test it out as well. I mean, the good and not good time. I mean, maybe right after Q four, right after Black Friday, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, so the the cost will not be extra extra high. Yeah. Now let's, let's talk about coffees. Um, as you can see, beard is is very foreign to me. I am I'm Polish, and only I can only remember one or not remember, but I know only one family member that has big beard, my uncle. <laughs> but other than that, no one in my family has like solid beards like like you do. Um, but coffee, I I'm I'm a coffee lover. We're constantly looking for new coffees. How did yep. you come about? the coffee brand and I, it's it's very unique the, the way you brand it the, the branding it's it's uh definitely outstanding compared to anything else I, I think black rifle could be like something similar because they have like similar similar branding close to it but it's very unique so how did you come up with with this company and what's kind of like the the the, the stage that you right now are you, you you've mentioned it's not like your priority but how 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 is that? Not, not that it's like not really a priority or anything like that. Um, I mean, it's one of our businesses, so it, it is a, a priority, but not not as much as, you know, Mad Viking is at the at this moment, just because of, you know, what we're trying to accomplish with Mad Viking. But on the coffee side, that just came about as, you know, my business partner and I were having a conversation and he's like, you know, I'd really love, love to ro roast coffee. He bought himself this small little tiny you know, mini roaster is electric. And, uh, he was just getting really getting into it, really involved. And I'm like, Hey, I would love to create another brand. I mean, that's, it's like it part beats, you know, like creating, creating a name, artwork and all that stuff. I, I just love it. Right. So we just, uh, you know, over the course of about probably about eight months, I was just came up with 
a really cool brand name that that made sense to us and some artwork behind it. And I I started building the website and writing blogs and all this other stuff and putting them, you know, the product design together. And he just, you know, we took a trip out to Idaho to get a roaster and purchased a roaster out there. And, you know, he just started practicing on it and uh, making coffee that he likes. Mm. He's like, I don't care if anybody else likes it. He's like, I have to want to drink it. And, and I feel like if I, if I want to drink it, everybody else is going to want to drink it too. So that kind of worked, you know, it's just, and then it wasn't about a year and a half into the business, two years, maybe um, we got a deal making coffee with Motley Crue, uh, the band. Uh, that's been a pretty good time. Those are all, you know, good guys. So that, that was a cool experience and we're just kind of, you know, growing, you know, learning with it. You also give back to the music projects at school in, in schools. That's I, I read yeah. on your new website. So also contributing from that company to like Yeah. At, at first we started to behind the behind the music, the VH1 that that used to show and stuff like that. And then we found that we could make more of a difference like locally and regionally by you know targeting and talking to different, you know music school teachers and stuff that we met out in concerts or, or anything like that. And we just felt that th it would be better off going about it that way versus, mm -hmm. you know, just giving it to a middleman. So we kind of, we kind of do it that route now, but we, yeah, we still give music programs across the United States. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely have to, to snag a bag. After 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 the recording, and I get get more coffee. We were going through a lot of coffee ever every single week, and I, we even start testing machines like coffee machines, various coffee machines. It's uh wherever we go or travel, doesn't matter. We always look for a nice coffee place. We live in Palm Desert, but we have Joshua trees today. They, they have very interesting coffee, low acidity levels. Then we found a brewery in um I mean roasting ro coffee roasting company. In um in the mountains here, wherever, wherever we go, we always try to test taste their their coffee and and find out you know, what what makes a difference and the, of of the coffee because every 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 coffee is so different. And uh, definitely, it's everything from origin to roasting style to even you know just humidity level, just everything. There there's so many differences and so many ways to go about it. Um, it's 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 an in it's an interesting part of it for sure. hundred percent. And I wanted to mention one thing, since you said that you're, you make coffee that you enjoy or your partner enjoy and love. And there is this, my favorite podcast, it's called the founders or founders podcast. And David, the, the host is reading biographies. He's basically talking about his notes for his notes on a podcast. He's done like 300 something episodes and I'm, I'm probably like 40% through all of them since I discovered them <laughs> a couple months ago. Yeah. And what you said is something that a lot of the, the most successful brands in the world sh share as well. Like every one of them was creating products they would be proud of and they wanted to use and they are they were using. And that's basically contributed to that success because they mm -hmm. were not just following any trends. Or something that you know my my work better right now. My term, obviously, it's not something you enjoy growing. So I feel like you guys definitely have have a like a gold mine for your and for your creativity. I love that. Very inspiring. Mm -hmm. So to to conclude, what ultimate? What's your ultimate goal for you personally for the businesses? Are you planning to launch another brand since this is something that you enjoy doing? Um, what, what's kind of like the goals for the next looking into the future? Uh, I, I, I think you could spread your thing. Um, I would love to just walk around creating brands with, you know, like a magic wand and stuff like that. I think it'd be great. It'd be fun. I would love to consult on new businesses and stuff like that. But I, I think like, I'd just be myself way too thin. So what, what I've done to kind of defeat desire is basically, you know, take our brand and see if I can do little cool side projects with it. 
I know with Mad Viking, we're we're creating a, a beer through through another uh, brewery that's working along with us, and that should be out pretty soon. With Brutality, we we created a a beer with them. We've done a coffee liqueur with a distillery. We've done a Mad Viking whiskey bourbon. Oh wow! Yeah, so it kind of kind of like stretching our brand out a little bit and and adding those little things on here and there. I think feeds that you know, creative part of me, while I can still like be totally immersed in the business and, and help it grow without myself too thin. Love it. Love it. Are you, are you to, <clears throat> to add a future at one point or when, when, the, when, when that offer would, would show up at the door or is that something that you, you guys never talk about? I uh, could be, we, we've talked about it, but it would be really tough because it's like a baby, you know, it's like you you created this you made this and this is what this is your life and what you have fun doing so i could see myself as a serial entrepreneur but at the same time i don't i don't know if i can let go of my firstborn right yeah. so i'd be tough it, it would just depend on the offer and the offer would just have to be you know some the the right people i guess you know yeah. i we have a lot of customers that I, I care for, and they find a lot of utility in our products. And I just can't let that go off to somebody else that might just wreck the ship into the rocks or something like that. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of how we feel right now. That may change in the future, but yeah. That, that was also something that a lot of founders shared from on the podcast, sure they had in, all in common, like once they accepted the offer, they didn't know what to do, what to do next. And I, I ask with some, you know, sometimes and I'm like, what would I do? Like, how would I structure my days? Like, I, I'm just, we're just starting out, but, um, so it's definitely out of the question for the next probably 10, 20 years, whatever. But, you know, I, th I feel that, that we should ask ourselves tough questions. I even have here a book for sure. with, uh, titled personal Socrates, let me show it to you that has tough questions that from various not only entrepreneurs, but world-class thinkers and performers. There's like athletes, there's authors, there's people that are, that um, died hundreds or thousands of years ago with questions they would yeah. have. And it's it's pretty, pretty interesting to sometimes just sit and ask yourself a question and see what, what's com what comes up. Definitely. I uh, want to throw in my Bill and Ted's reference. Every time I, I see Socrates, I, I, I say Socrates. Yeah, if you ever ever seen that movie, um, it's just the 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 juvenile twelve year old company, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there it's it's funny that you say this. I I don't know where I heard it, but I I was listening to a podcast the other day, and this guy was on purpose mispronouncing all the names, and he was <laughs> he was obvious he was sort of personal brand. I don't know what what business he was in, but guy. Yeah scale his youtube channel with shorts to 70 million views in like 90 days because just with short for in youtube shorts only no long form content oh, wow. just, okay. and the reason is that people you know how people are when he, he was like why are you know this is wrong this is not how you pronounce this name and everyone started commenting on these videos and oh. laughing him out. And they didn't know. I mean, some people knew that he did it on purpose. It for, and yeah, for engagement. Yeah. Blew up, blew up, you know, out of, out of the, the channel out of the water. So it's interesting, you know, how um, sometimes you, you, you something simple like this get people, gets people like going and, you know, and he obviously... If if you get views, you get attention, and some some of these people will realize that it was you know on purpose. Some of them will be like I don't know offended, I guess. <laughs> some philosophers right. might be offended if you mispronounce the name, but that's that's interesting. Jason, I will I will thank you so much for time. It was a pleasure. Yep. We'll leave Good all the down below. When some founders would like to uh, ask you some questions about branding, what would be the best way to find you? Was it LinkedIn or are you active on any other platform as well? I, I am kind of active on LinkedIn. Not as much as, you know, I probably should be, but um, I am on there. So that'd be a good way to get a hold of me. All right. I will I'll put a link, if you don't mind, down below with your LinkedIn so they can connect if they have some questions on branding. And of course, if they want to try 
great coffee. They they'll find the link down below in the video as well. Or beard grooming yep. products. Yes, well. grow a good beard. Definitely <laughs> an example for that. So thanks so much for your time. It was a pleasure, and um, hope to chat soon again. Yeah, same here. Good talking to you.